Hey everybody, Jeff Reinhardt here, LMP in Lancaster Online. Welcome into basketball season. Here we are, uh, LL League Hoops 2023-24. And once again this season, we're going to roll out a really cool companion piece uh, video series, getting to know some of the kids around the league, boy side, girl side. For this season, we're going to start on the girl side. Here we are at Donegal in Mount Joy. Indians off to a good start. And we found a fascinating kid <laughs> to chat with here in week one. Please introduce yourself and uh, tell the crowd who you are. Uh, my name is Josie Garrig. Um, I'm a sophomore at Donegal, and it's my first year back in the States. My family lived in Thailand for 10 years. Um, they did uh, missionary work at a Christian international school. So, yeah. Okay. Well, wel welcome back to the States. <laughs> here we are. Okay. Fascinating story here. Um, when did you guys leave you were a little kid yeah yeah so my family left we lived in indiana and we moved to thailand in 2013 and i was like five and a half mm -hmm. so um, i started kindergarten there and have been there for my almost my entire life and what town were you in where did you grow up in thailand <laughs> we lived in chiang mai thailand okay. so it's like the second largest city um, second to the capital, Bangkok. Bangkok, gotcha. Which is eight hours away, I understand. Yeah. If people are trying to look at a map and where's this place yeah. at exactly. It's to the north. Okay. All right. Speak to, speak to the mission work first. Uh, why you went? What what you ended up doing for you know ten years while you were there? What was the what was the goal of the trip originally? Um, the goal was to um, serve missionary families there. So my parents were like doing discipleship with um, missionary kids, and like the whole purpose of our school was to provide an education for um, all the missionary families because Thailand's a fairly safe country in terms of religion. So um, a lot of mission like organizations would base in Chiang Mai and then they would go out to like China or um, India, like a lot of the not safe um, countries nearby. Earliest memories of Thailand would be what? You said you were in kindergarten. So you're growing up at the same time that yeah. you're trying to help these people. Yeah. What, are, what are some early memories there? And did you even realize like, whoa, this isn't the United States well, here. Yeah. We're, we're not at home. I was really young. Um, I think probably my earliest memories was we had to do like training at the beginning and so um, my dad was working at the time and my sister was going to school and I was at home with my two younger brothers and my mom. And we had to get to like our mission building every morning. And so we had to take um, public transportation and it was really scary because it's not like American public transportation. And it's pretty much like, they're called song towers and they're like these like trucks that are open at the back and so you just like climb into it and then you just sit in the truck and they drive you all around and so like being really new to a foreign country and like we didn't speak any of the language like it was terrifying and so every single morning we'd get in our song tao and we'd try to get up to the right area like right up in the city where it was like really busy and crazy and so that's probably some of my earliest memories when you became a teen and you figured it all out Give me a typical day in Thailand. What are you doing over there? Um, it was fairly similar to here. Um, I mean, like, I went to school, so I get up early in the morning. My parents were both teachers, so they had to get to school early. So um, we drive. It was about a 30-minute drive to our school, so not super great. But And then um, I'd have school all day. Our school is really nice, and it's like open air because it's a tropical country, so we don't have to have air conditioning everywhere. So that was really cool, too. And then um, I'd have basketball practice right after school pretty much every day. And then we come home. And since both of my parents were teaching, um, we ended up just ordering food a lot. So um, th in Thailand, they have this thing and it's called grab. And you can pretty much just order food to your house. Like, and it's really cheap, like really, really cheap to get food directly to your house. Basketball in Thailand, were you surprised to hear that they had that there? And, and what got you interested in basketball over there? Well, my dad has been coaching basketball since before I was born. So like, I've just grown up around basketball and like, I've always loved it. I've always loved watching it and playing it. And I like, I pretty much grew up with a ball in my hands. So it's just like always been one of like my favorite things. And so my school that I went to there, they had great basketball programs. So I started basketball in like third grade. And um, yeah, I played for like the, the U10 league with all the little kids. And then um, I played in fourth grade and pretty much since then. Is it the same, is it this, I hate to say, is it the same game? Obviously, 
but are there any differences over there? Like, do they have gyms like this over there? Or, or how did that work? Our school for sure did not have a gym like this. Okay. We had um, definitely not wood courts. Like, any time I saw a wood court, I'd be like, mouth open, like gaping. I'd be like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. But um, it definitely was a little bit different. We played with FIBA rules instead of um, American high school rules. So there's a couple of differences. Like we use a shot clock. So you only have um, 24 seconds when, once you pass the half court line. Um, so like the game's a lot faster because here you can stall and you can just pass around for minutes. And there you can't do that. So okay. that's a lot different. Also, our three-point line was um, like NBA length. Cool. So it's about two or three steps back from where it is here. Okay. So um, that's what I'm used to shooting. So like okay. having it closer up was definitely an adjustment for me. Okay, well, it's a little easier. Yeah, it is. If nothing but else. Now I got to change my whole shot. So. Did, uh, did you realize, and how old were you when you realized, OK, basketball, I think I can play this. Um, and I want to keep playing. I think I really got into it um, around sixth grade. That was when like I started doing like off season with the varsity teams because they never had enough girls during off season anyway. So they pulled up younger girls to play. So um, I joined them for a couple months and then I just like really started to love it. Tell me about leaving Thailand. Why did you guys go? Did you know it was time to go? Did you have to get back here for any reason? And was it tough to leave? Yeah, so we just felt like God was calling us to come back to the States because we'd been there for 10 years and my sister was graduating high school and so she was going to be here in college by herself and we're like well she could use some support so um, it was definitely tough leaving because that's like the only home I've ever known so um, it was hard to say goodbye to things and all my friends and stuff but um, it's like I definitely have more opportunities for basketball here like scouting wise like to play in college it's a lot easier to get scouted here than it would be overseas so I have a lot of new opportunities but it was definitely hard to say goodbye coming to American high school and the whole works what's this been like for you what's that transition like learning new kids and where's my locker and what classes am I in and when's basketball season how's that going it's been crazy because my old school, we only had about 50 people in each grade. Our entire like high school was about 200 kids, 200, 300. So like coming back to um, Donegal here, where we have like 200 people in each grade, like it's just it's been crazy that like the school's so big and Donegal's a fairly small public school for the area. For around here, yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely been crazy. And then like the schedule's a lot different because we only have four classes in a day, and I'm used to like six. Oh boy. But I really like school and I'm like love hard classes so I've been enjoying some of those. To kids who might be thinking about doing missions and going overseas and helping people, what do you say to those kids? I think it's great. It was probably one of the best experiences in my life that I will ever have. Um, just like seeing other cultures and eating different foods and like just learning about other people's traditions is amazing and it's like it's incredible and like just traveling and being with other cultures is like such like I just love it so much and I definitely recommend it and like being able to serve people is also really great because a lot of other countries are very poor and there's a lot of poverty and there's a lot of people struggling so just being able to like help people is just incredible and being able to like share the love of God with people was just a really great experience. Proud of what you did there? Yeah. You feel like you, even though you were a kid do you feel like you left a mark and helped people? Yeah, I sure hope I did. I hope people think I left a mark.